music. Then anybody? Yeah. Thank you for coming to uh, <laughs> somebody in the back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's uh, he's not world famous, and it's interesting that he's not. He was uh, born in 1917 in Ohio, and he says that his he, uh, influences, his main influences, were George Gershwin and Duke Ellington. Oh, nice. But you wouldn't necessarily hear that, but maybe you will. Yeah. Uh, and he's uh, known primarily as being an arranger and a composer more than as a pianist. Uh, but in the music that I've, uh, where I discovered him was on records with, uh, and I didn't buy the records because he was on them, I bought them because like, Fats Navarro was on them, and who was a great trumpet player, and uh, there's another one, Fats Navarro, they liked each other, and uh, John Coltrane did a record with them, and Billy Joe Jones was a good friend of his. They're, uh, and Dexter Boyden recorded with him, and Charlie Parker uh, recorded with him, and Miles Davis. So he was well situated and well respected among uh, jazz players. And he was uh, always he was known for um, his love for beauty. Wasn't that a nice thing to be known for? Yeah. <laughs> and it was, uh, he wrote a song, a piece called "The Dial B for Beauty." And we're not going to play that tonight, but it's a it's a great. Uh, Tune. I think he. I read some story that he was going to be a doctor, and then he he switched his uh, profession because he he wanted to be more involved. He felt there was an urgent need for uh, beauty. I thought that's that's just really wonderful. Like, you know, <laughs> and his music is. Uh, uh, I think it's accessible and, and easy to like. It's not sensational, and it's and it's interesting to think. Well, why isn't this guy really well known? And there's no uh, like hook or something that. Uh, really gets get you, but uh, he's often called a musician's musician. So people that like uh, player, he, he, improvisers have always been attracted to his music. The chords make sense, <coughs> like that's attractive. So maybe it makes too much sense. It's too beautiful. <laughs> Nobody likes that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's sad but true. Yeah. So we're gonna play a bunch of his uh, stuff tonight, and um, you know what I think we'll do, and because. He, Nothing to do is sitting there. You can uh, pass these around and look at the covers and look at the records and if you want to. You know. Give them headphones in case they want to plug in. <laughs> I wish we could. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with this. We're going to start with a tune called Tad's Delight. All right. Two, one.
like to introduce the band. <laughs> Thank you, Hi, uh, Tim. Yeah, Peter. Tim and Peter. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, glad you guys have met finally. We've met. Uh, that's uh, Tim Gilmore and Peter Consilio. Who, uh, I'm very happy to uh, play with on a regular basis, and they, uh, it always it's always fun every time. So it's it's uh, a good sign, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, it's great to be able to say that. And uh, yeah, so in the, thinking about the, while we were playing there, I thought for a second about uh, the influence of Dameron in, in uh, his, uh, I think I hear uh, more influence in the, in the music since his death in the 1960s of his style than I do of, it's this radical idea, but of Ellington. Uh, so, uh, and I don't really know, like even though nobody knows his name, or maybe, uh, or of uh, or the other composer he mentioned, Gershwin. I sort of hear Dameron's voice uh, in, in a lot of music that's been since, even though people might not know who he is. So I just was thinking about that, and uh, that's open for a challenge. You know, but, uh, our next song we're going to play is called uh, Soul Train, and it's like that, uh, it's not from that uh, uh, black dance music thing from the 60s and 70s. Uh, it's not from that, it's, uh, it's from, uh, I don't know if I have the right one, oh, somebody has a record. It's on a record he made with John Coltrane, and uh, Damron wrote the song for that date uh, to play with, with Coltrane, which is a beautiful uh, idea. All right, we set. Two.
Good bass, which is a phrase that uh, has disappeared from our vocabularies. <laughs> but I think it used to be uh, some people said a lot. So it was like usually when you say good bass, you might think about fishing. But it could be about like how somebody's dressing, or the way somebody looks, or somebody's personality. Like, she's good bass. Possible. <laughs> uh, that's my interpretation of that song. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of blues songs. Nobody, uh, I'll slap that. Sonny, there's a lot of blues, old blues songs. Like, many fish bite if you got fresh good bait. Uh, yeah. did, what did he say? Uh, it's a lot of, there's a lot of old blues songs. Called good bait? Yeah. Or that uses the, use the phrase? Yeah, many fish bite if you got good bait. Good. Here's a little tab that I would good. like to relate. Like from no, the so 20s, I'm, not, 30s, uh, I'm not crazy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> All right, good bait. Did you did it? Ready? All right. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> I'm a lot of guys. Uh, I'm not sure whether we should uh, tonight. I was thinking of playing a couple, a um, couple more, and then maybe taking a break, uh, and then a uh, short break, and then. Uh, but I'm, open, I'm a little worried about the snow. Uh, but probably it's not gonna. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> so we'll make it to the house from here. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to play another tune. We're all staying at Sunny's tonight. So we're <laughs> kind of play another tune with a great title called "The The Scene Is Clean." And that's, Tad was full of good titles. You know, if you like the his delights, and there's one that we're not doing tonight. It's called "The, the Kitchenette Across the Hall." Falcon Glow was another one that he that he. Would, uh, the scene is clean. So, on the end, slide. Slide at the end. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
We ended it all up together. All together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just as planned. Yeah. <laughs> um, next thing we're going to do is uh, uh, his, uh, Ted's probably most famous composition. And when I was uh, learning to play, I remember learning it in a, in a book, uh, something called Lady Bird. And it's it's an, often a tune that uh, it attracts it attracts great players, but also it's a, it's comprehensible, so it's beginners often play it. And it's uh, we're going to do it in an odd way because it's it's the most since it's the most familiar one, we're going to do it in the most uh, unfamiliar way. <laughs> <laughs> and we're we're going to try to each. Uh, We'll each play a, uh, a solo, and then with everybody else dropping out, so, and the, the, and no, we, no, we have no idea what each other's going to do. And then uh, we'll, we'll use the song as a bridge between our uh, solos. That explains it. So let's we'll start on melodic. Thank <laughs> you. 
to take a break, you're welcome to stand up. There's a bathroom in the house. You just go through the back door and into the, through the kitchen. Or stand up and uh, help yourself to another drink or get some fresh air and that's, uh, be comfortable. Well, break in front of the can. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Well, I wanted to say what, what you were doing there. No, I, 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 the second time I've ever seen I never released my trade secrets. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That was a lot hey, of fun. Sonny, yeah. Are you okay with us having the door open for a second? Are you okay with the door being open for a second? Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. How about the heat behind you? Yeah. We got standing room only out the back door here. Yeah. yeah. You could be in charge of the temperature control. Yeah. Thanks for coming over. Uh, yeah. So we'll do a um, meeting call. song called Mating Call is from the Tad Damron record with uh, John Coltrane and it's um, yeah, it's got a well, you'll hear what it is it's got a little bit of a rumba section and it's a beautiful melody Sit on this. Don't sit on this yet. Sit in this yet. Don't touch the king by it. I brought some for you guys. start?
famous song, a uh, relatively well-known song, often played in the uh, 50s and 60s, and then by uh, students everywhere. Hot <laughs> House.
but it's a hot house. Yeah. yeah, it's a hot house. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to think what he might have had in mind with the title. Yeah. 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 Hot house. Uh, I guess that's what happen, happens when you have good bait. You get a hot house. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to change the pace with uh, one of Ted Demeron's uh, more famous song that she, which he wrote. Uh, I've read that he wrote this uh, for Sarah Vaughan. Uh, it's a song called "If You Could See Me Now." Uh, let's see a little uh, two four more.
Ten songs, and I, I think it's about like a quarter of the songs that, that he's written. And plus, he, he wrote many, many arrangements. I think it's more for that kind of a activity. For he wrote for Dizzy Gillespie bands. He wrote for Kansas City bands in the 1930s. He lived into the 1960s. Now we're gonna play. We've got two more to play, and this one's called Our Delight. And another wonderful title. Already <laughs> late.
There's a tad's delayed and R delayed, and there's another one that's called sin's delayed that I'm showing. And it's, it's a good idea. It's open for future composition. Yeah. So this we got one more song I'm gonna play. Another one that uh, he recorded with uh, on the album he made with John Coltrane in the 1950s, I think. And it's called On a Misty Night. And I think it's another one that deserves uh, more play. So we're gonna add or we're gonna play. <laughs> Thank you again, Peter Concilio and uh, Tim Gilmore for the musical uh, <laughs>
Thank you.